Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about comic books, the American, North American comic book industry, and how even its most ardent defenders are starting to admit that the books are too damn expensive. You know what they're doing, right? They're trying to get as much blood out of the existing stones as they can because fewer and fewer people are reading Western comic books. Compare that to manga sales, where manga is actually selling out all over the world. There is a worldwide manga shortage. But here in the U.S., we're going to start charging $6 for Batman comics. Go figure. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we're over 185,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, it definitely means a lot to us. We do talk about comics. We talk about animation. We talk about movies. We talk about whatever interests us that day. And we do comic books. Uh, we do make comic books. We've worked in comics before. And we've been kind of keeping an eye on the comic book industry. And frankly, there's not a lot of good news in the comic book industry. Every once in a while, you get a, a bump like the uh, Berserker Kickstarter but for the most part, comic sales have, have flatlined. They're very anemic. Uh, comic shops are closing. It's, look, we're, we're getting near the end of the direct market, right? Uh, Marvel made a major jump to Penguin Random House. They're not going to go exclusively through Diamond anymore. That's not a good sign. Uh, it means that they're looking to make more money, have more control over where their stuff gets distributed. So again, that's not, that's not really a good thing. Uh, I don't think it means that, that the direct market is getting ready to go tits up, as, as they say, right? Um, so Sci-Fi Wire, which also had the Sci-Fi uh, Girls blog or whatever, uh, you know, they've been kind of like, hey, guys, comics are fine. You know, a lot of people are like, hey, comics are fine. Well, now they're talking about, this is uh, Mike Avila. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, talking about how expensive comics are. You know, and this we've seen this before when comic books, you know, start to wind down, the sales start to wind down. What happens is they start charging more because they have to make more money. And we saw this in the late 80s, early 90s. And I'm going to pull this tweet up um, from Perch, who I strongly recommend following him on Twitter, following his YouTube channel if you're into the numbers of comics. Uh, very, very smart guy. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit about the uh, the inflation of comics. But yeah, Sci-Fi Wire said we're priced out. At what point are comics too expensive for fans? You know, um, he said, I won't lie. I sure do miss the time when a buck got you two comics and change. Uh, but I get how inflation, wow, how old is this guy? <laughs> but I get how inflation works and how rising paper costs can't be ignored. Mm, we'll talk about that. I'm also quite aware that the higher cover prices of today's market have led to creators being able to make a decent living while entertaining us. Mm, we'll talk about that too. Because actually the, the page rates have flatlined. Uh, the page rates haven't seen a substantial increase in like 20 years uh, for a lot of people. And it's not the cost of paper because frankly, when you start printing the quality or the, the quantity yeah, printing the quality. Uh, printing the, uh, when you stop printing the quality, that's when the sales drop off. No, when you start printing the quantity of comics that Marvel and DC print, we're talking pennies per book, you know? Uh, so it's not really it's not really the paper either. I know they, they keep using that excuse. Like, look at this fancy printing, all this computer color. We got to charge a buck more for that. No, 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 no. They have to make profit. Because remember, Marvel and DC are both owned by major corporations that are hurting for cash and they're going to look at their comic book division and be like, what have you done for us lately? You know, just existing, just paying for yourself is not enough. Where is the profit? Uh, there does come a point where comic books can simply become too expensive for many fans, forcing readers to drop titles, not because they don't like reading them, but because they simply can't afford to anymore. Well, Sorry, if you really loved it, you would pay for it. Uh, I think a lot. I think it's a combination of the two. It's basically, it's not worth paying four or five dollars for what might be ten minutes of entertainment, subpar entertainment, and doing that, you know, dozens of times per month. When I first started reading comics regularly, 
the comics were like 75 cents a dollar, you know, and, and so I could, I could buy most of Marvel's line. I read a lot of Marvel. I didn't read a lot of DC when I was a kid. I read Batman every once in a while, but mostly it was Marvel. I could buy most of Marvel's line for, you know, $20, $30 a month, and I could make that mowing lawns, you know? So I, I, I bought a lot of comics, but now it's like the same amount of money gets me like five or six comics that frankly, I'm probably not going to like, or I'm going to buy them and I'm going to go out to Twitter and I'm going to see the creators shooting off about politics and shit on Twitter. And I'm going to be like, hell no, I don't want to support this anymore. And it's hard, you know, to, to go track down floppies. You know, there are fewer and fewer comic shops. My, my hometown, we had four comic shops and it was a very big town. We're talking a hundred thousand people, you know, uh, we had four comic shops back in the, the early nineties. And they've all gone out of business. So, you know, lots of them many years ago. Anyway, one of the big two publishers, DC Comics, is bumping the price up on some of its monthly titles to $5.99 for 40 pages. What? In its solicitations for June, several ongoing series, Joker 4, Superman Red and Blue, Wonder Woman, and Gold 1, and uh, one of the company's flagship books, Batman 109, are listed with a $6 cover price. What the hell are they smoking? Think about that for a moment. If someone wanted to read all four of those titles, it would cost $24 before tax to do so. Four comics for 24 bucks. That's a big financial hit. Meanwhile, you can go buy manga for $10, $12 and get hundreds of pages. You know, it's probably going to be better stuff than what, <laughs> what they're producing now, but I digress. Uh, I'm aware that these comics are 40 pages. That just means you're getting about 30 pages of actual story. Also, it's not one story. Each of these issues has at least one backup story, which is fine, but I'm sure I'm not the only fan who buys books for as much uh, certain creative teams as for the character. As a Batman fan, I don't want or need a backup story. It sounds like an annual. I personally have never been much for backup stories in ongoing series. If I want an anthology book, I'll buy one of several on the market, uh, like Wonder Woman, Black and White and Gold. Black, White and Gold, is that what it is? Black, white, and gold. I'm sorry, I thought it was black and white and gold. Uh, consider this. Both DC and Marvel Comics have almost completely eliminated the $2.99 cover price comic. DC has a couple of Scooby-Doo titles at that price. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo titles at that price, which is a smart move since they target a younger audience. But almost every other comic from the two biggest publishers starts at $3.99. In fact, June solicitations for both DC and Marvel show a bunch of books listed at $4.99, including some that I'm dying to read, uh, including a bunch around the Heroes Reborn event, which I'm, I'm hearing is not selling as well as they were hoping. Uh, $4.99. You know, they love Jason Aaron, but $4.99 is high. So what's going to happen? They said, who suffers the most? Creators launching new comics suffer the most. The economics of creator-owned books are different than the work for hire done for publishers such as Marvel and DC. Not for much longer. I don't think either one is going to be publishing a bunch of books for much longer. Uh, by the nature of the business model of a place like Image, the industry leader in creator-owned comics, the creators keep the bulk of the revenue, but continuing to raise cover prices won't necessarily increase your profit if fewer people are buying it. This is it. Trying to get more blood out of the same amount of rocks, right? Uh, the comic book industry, the Western comic book reading market is not growing. In fact, it's shrinking. Uh, it's not even sustainable at this point unless you start charging these ridiculous cover prices. And we're hearing more and more of that. Um, a lot of comic shops aren't taking chances on indie titles because people don't have the money for them. They don't sell. Batman, Superman, X-Men, Spider-Man, you know, movie tie-ins, that kind of stuff sells. But Six dollars for an effing superhero comic, monthly superhero comic? That's absolutely insane. I remember when I was a kid, it was a lot to ask for two or three dollars for an annual, but at least you got a lot of content. They're usually you know 48 pages, 64 pages, whatever. You got a lot of content. You know, this is just insane. Uh absolutely insane. Um, you know, and I have to agree with, you know, some creators are out there saying, I'd rather, I'd rather 10,000 people buy my book at $19 a comic than one person buys a single piece for a million. It's pop culture, culture for the people. The people have moved on. They're not buying 
the direct market stuff anymore. And we're starting to see, you know, everybody scramble to try to make up the, the deficit, you know? Uh, Sci-Fi Wire says the point being, yeah, you can try to band-aid the problem by simply tacking another dollar on the cover price. There will always be some fans, some fans devoted enough who are financially able to keep buying it. But what's the point of creating art that only a select few can afford? That's not what comics is about, or at least it shouldn't be. It used to be disposable entertainment. It used to be disposable entertainment for everybody. They were cheap. Uh, it was cheap and easy to read. I mean, a kid now, they're going to look at, you know, yeah, if you even get kids in the comic shop, you don't get a lot of kids in comic shops. I'm sorry, you guys keep saying you do. You don't. You don't get a lot of kids in the comic shop. But, you know, they're not going to spend five or six bucks for a, for a comic book. They're not. They're going to be like, hey, I can buy a mobile game for that. I can buy DLC for whatever game I'm playing now for that. You know, they're not going to buy it. Um, they said if cover prices keep rising, the industry may pay a price in terms of lost fans. It may never be able to recover from. Thank you, Sci-Fi Wire, for stating, uh, restating the obvious things that YouTubers have been saying for years and that they've been blasted for, for saying that the comic book industry is not in a very good place right now. Again, we're seeing Marvel make moves to try to make more money, uh, you know, try to stay afloat. Uh, the pandemic absolutely wrecked the comic book industry. I mean, you know, there's some pent-up demand or whatever. You can argue that. But gouging the remaining comic book readers is not a solution. Again, mentioning Perch. Uh, Perch said that, uh, you know, we're, we're way off on the inflation. People are like, oh, it's inflation. Uh, it said comic costs over time on the left and adjusted in 2020 dollars on the right. 85 to 2000 was a pretty rough uh, advancement. Yeah, you can see that, like, boom, they skyrocketed, you know, and this would have happened around the, you know, speculator bubble, and they continue to rise. And I think it could be argued right around here uh, in the early 90s. That's, you know, when we had the, the bubble burst and we lost a lot of readers and we stopped, you know, catering to hundreds of thousands of readers every month on a moderately successful book. I mean, remember, you know, Marvel used to cancel books if they dip below a couple hundred thousand units a month. And now, you know, they're, they're putting out press releases if they sell a hundred thousand copies. So what they got to do to keep the revenue coming in is they got to start gouging people. You know, it's, it's not a good situation at all. Um, here's inflation calculator, Terrence, uh, 1961 fantastic four one cost 10 cents. If we're going by the U.S. inflation calculator, comics today shouldn't be any higher than 88 cents. 88 cents. That's crazy. Uh, the closest you get to that now is probably Alterna. Uh, Alterna sells their books for under two bucks, I think. So, you know, meanwhile, while the American comic book industry is having a huge problem you know, right now hemorrhaging readers, there's a manga shortage. There is a global manga shortage. Um, this is crazy. Over on Twitter, Ben Applegate, who helps curate manga with Kodansha, uh, shared a, sh a short message with fans warning them to stock up on manga unless it gets severely backordered due to reprint delays. They can't keep it in stock. They can't keep manga in stock, but they can't freaking sell Western comics. Uh, he said, if you see a manga that you want to read in a store, you should buy it now. The reprint, reprint situation is unexaggeratedly apocalyptic and you might not see that manga in stock again for months sales of manga have more than tripled from 2020 to 2021 and there isn't enough printer capacity to keep even some mid-list titles in stock supply was already at crisis levels in book printing before covid due to rising book sales increased demand for amazon packaging labor equipment shortages logistics issues Take your pick. These problems are being solved, but not quickly. This is insane. Like, they can't print enough manga. But over here in the U.S., they have to charge more for comics just to make enough money to stay in business. What the hell are you doing wrong? What are you doing wrong? You're doing something wrong. And you know what? YouTubers have been telling you for years, years what you're doing wrong and you didn't listen. Instead, you demonized them and any fans that agreed with them. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.